The binomial theorem is a very handy tool to use if we would like to expand binomials or answer some questions about them. In this first part, this first video, we're going to be looking at what the binomial theorem says and where it comes from. So before we get started, there's just some background that we need just to make sure that you know what a factorial is. If I say n factorial for any natural number n, it's n times n plus minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to times 1. So for example, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The times 1 doesn't really make a difference, but just for completeness, it's there. So it's 20 times 3, which is 60 times 2, which is 180. So that is 5 factorial. So that's what factorial means for any natural number n. The next thing is when we talk about choosing n objects out of, out of r, or choosing r objects out of n, ncr, it's a combination. How many ways can I combine those r objects if I've got n in total? So if you don't have background on this, just take a look at that. NCR, in terms of the formula, sometimes it's, we use round brackets. Sometimes we just say NCR. Most common than not, we will use this notation. But what it means is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. So, for example, if I've got five objects, how many ways can I choose two objects out of five? 5C2 five is 5 factorial over 2 factorial, n minus 5 minus 2, 3 factorial. All right, and you can calculate that. And just as a side note, your calculator has a button for NCR. So please be, feel free to use that. You do not have to use the formula to calculate NCR. Same with factorial. There is a button on your calculator for it. You can use the formulas to calculate it, but be aware that the is a shortcut on your calculator. So I'm not going to complete that one, but you can do that calculation. So that's what we need for this section. So what is the binomial theorem about? Well, we're looking at expanding binomials. Now a binomial means by, refers to two. We've got a polynomial with two terms, A and B. We're gonna look in our second video, we're gonna look at some different variations of just a boring A and a B. Those things can be anything, but just for the sake of the formula, we're looking at a and b. So we know a plus b to the power naught, anything to the power naught is 1. To the power 1, it stays the same. Now, this is a common trinomial that's multiplied out in school or other way around factorized. If I've got a square, it's the first one square plus 2 times the first one times the second one times the last one square. So this is a pattern that from school you would have recognized. Some of you might know how to expand a cube. It's a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. All right, then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now where we headed in the binomial theorem is to get a general formula for a plus b to the power n. So whether it's to the power 5 or to the power 100, we're going to get a formula to be able to multiply out that binomial that we don't have to do repeated multiplications. And that's what the binomial theorem is and what it's used for. So we'll get to the theorem itself shortly, but we're going to deduce the theorem and we're going to do that by looking at patterns. So looking at these five, so we're not proving this theorem, we're simply looking at patterns. So the first thing we want to look at is how many terms in each of these. Now to the power naught is a little bit boring, but we can look at that one too. To the power 1 gave me two terms. To the power 2 gave me, gave me three terms. To the power 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. To the power 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. Can you see the pattern? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. Every time for a plus b to the power n, a plus b to the power n has n plus 1 terms. The number of terms is one more than, than the exponent. Right, so that's the first thing we notice. The next pattern we're going to look at are these exponents, these numbers in front of my a's and b's. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to start with the squares because to the power 1 is a bit boring. Well, we can start with that. There's a 1 and a 1. 1, 2, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 
All right, there is a beautiful pattern here. I'm going to write it in terms of a triangle because this is quite a famous triangle. And it's called Pascal's Triangle. So if we take a look at the pattern that's forming here, if I look, and I wrote it in the form of a triangle deliberately, if I go here from my second row to my third row, I see it always starts with one. But this term I got by adding that one and one together. One plus one gives me two. This three I got by adding those two together. Same here, I got a three by adding two and one together. Here I get a four by adding the three and one. I get the six by adding the three and three. I get the four by adding a three and one. So if we continue in this pattern, I should get a one because I've got nothing to add to that. One and four gives me five if I add them. Four and six gives me ten. Six and four gives me ten. Four and one gives me five and then one. And that is correct with the coefficients. So that's very nice. It forms a nice big pattern. But if I've got 100 terms, I don't want to keep having to write this triangle bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, if you take a look and read up about Pascal's triangle, it does come up often. And it's something that does have some special meaning. So you can look at that. But we're not going to necessarily use a triangle, but we can see the pattern there. What we are going to use is we are going to look at them written in terms of NCR. So if I look at my final row here, and we can keep expanding this triangle, but this first one we can look at um, my n value is my exponent. So it's 5c0, 5c1, 5c2, 5c3, 5c4, and 5c5. That are those coefficients that we get there. So with this, and you can see that that works for all the rows, and that is how we're going to find our coefficients. So we've got our coefficients sorted out. Now let's look at the exponents. When we look at the exponents, we know we've got one term more than, the ex than this exponent out here. My first is, is an a to that power 2. My last term is a b to the power 2, and that's what we get every time for the first and the last term. So that's easy to see. So what's happening with the exponents in between? Now, I'm going to start here at the third one to the power 3, so you can see the pattern nicely. The exponents of a become less. 3, 2, 1. What's the exponent of a there? If I've got b cubed, it's the same as a to the power naught b cubed. Or if I've got a cubed, it's the same as a cubed times b to the power naught. So the exponents of a become less, and the exponents of b become more. 1, 2, 3. Same with to the power 4. The exponents of a, 4, 3, 2, 1, naught. The exponents of b, naught, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can check that for the to, power, to the power 5. So that is the pattern we pick up. And that is where the binomial theorem comes from. So I'm going to go straight to the binomial theorem now. So this is what the binomial theorem looks like. It says a plus b to the power n is the sum when r goes from 0 to n of ncr, a to the power n minus r, b to the power r. So what will that look like? a plus b to the power n is the sum. So we start where r is 0. So it's nc0. r is 0, so it's a to the power n, b to the power 0. I don't even have to write that because b to the power 0 is 1 plus nc1, a to the power n minus 1, b to the power 1, plus nc2, a to the power n minus 2, b to the power 2. So we can see the exponents, how they work, we can see the coefficients, and we know we've got n plus 1 terms. But the terms will show for themselves because r goes from 0 to n, that'll give me n plus 1. So that my last term is going to be nc nor nc where r is n so nc n a to the power n minus n which is a to the power naught b to the power n so this is the binomial theorem and we've looked at patterns to see where it comes from so yet again this isn't a proof what we've done but we've observed the patterns and we've we can substantiate through looking at patterns that this is what the binomial theorem looks like
So what can we do with the binomial theorem? The first thing we can do is simply expand a binomial. x plus 1 to the power of 5 is then, now we've got some actual things. We know my n is 5, so r goes from 0 to 5. ncr, well, n is 5, so it's 5cr. r changes, but n doesn't change. Then my first term, the a, which is now x to the power 5 minus r, and the b term is 1 to the power r. And that's what we have. And this is what we then expand to get our six terms to expand this binomial. So this is not a complicated one. In the next video, we're going to look at ones that are way more messy. Now, 1 to the power r, it doesn't matter what r is. Anywhere from 0 to 5, that's just going to be 1. So this is just going to be the sum when r goes from 0 to 5 of 5cr x to the power 5 minus r. There we go. So my first term is going to be 5c0 x to the power 5 plus 5c1 x to the power 4 plus 5c2 x to the power 3 plus 5c3 x to the power 2 plus 5c4 x to the power 1 plus 5c5 x to the power 0, which is just 1. And this will give me my expanded binomial. And you can use your calculator to get the values. 1x to the power 5 plus, plus 5x to the power 4 plus 10x cubed plus 10x squared plus 5x plus 1. And that is x plus 1 to the 5 expanded. So what we will do in the next video, we will look at some complicated binomials that are a little bit more messy than this one, and we'll also look at what type of questions we can answer using the binomial theorem.